Thank you for watching videos by Family Travel Photos. Today is June 7th, 2021, and we're leaving Grand Teton National Park to begin our exploration of Yellowstone. In this episode, we'll provide 40 tips for visiting Yellowstone National Park. So if you're planning a trip, stay tuned for great photos and helpful information to make your vacation better. This is part of our series of travel vlogs and tutorials from our trip to Estes Park, Grand Teton National Park, Yellowstone, Cody, Wyoming, Devil's Tower, Mount Rushmore, and Badlands National Park. Click the subscribe icon in the lower right corner so you know when the next video will be released. On June 7th, we left our cabin at Signal Mountain Lodge to make the 26-mile drive to Yellowstone National Park's south entrance. We stopped at Jackson Lake just long enough for a last look at the Teton Mountains over the water. As we approached Yellowstone, the terrain took on a different look with an endless expanse of trees. We arrived at the south entrance around 8.30 a.m. and stopped for the obligatory photo with the park sign. We are at the entrance for the park now. It is 8.48 and the line isn't too bad. It's, I don't know, maybe like 15 cars up here in two lines. Since we entered the south entrance and we would spend the night in West Yellowstone, we decided to visit West Thumb Geyser Basin and the Upper Geyser Basin. If we had time, we might go to another spot or two on our way to West Yellowstone. Once we passed through the south entrance, we got our first sense of just how big this park is. From the south entrance, it's a 21 mile drive, about a half hour, to reach West Thumb Geyser Basin, the closest tourist spot to the entrance. West Thumb is the largest geyser basin on the shore of Yellowstone Lake. We walked almost all of the trail, which is not so much a trail as it is a boardwalk. The entire walk is about a mile. The geyser basin, with its colorful pools set alongside the brilliant blue lake, provided a wonderful introduction to Yellowstone National Park. We just finished our uh, walk around West Thumb Geyser Basin. Uh, really cool spot. There are some beautiful little pools in there. Very blue pools and very clear water you can see down in them. There's uh, some geysers out in the lake that you can see and some mud pots. Uh, so really cool place. So my thoughts, uh, very, very pretty. Um, be, be conscientious of people that are taking pictures, especially like the morning with the long shadows. Um, remember your shadow could fall across their shot. So if you see someone taking a picture, just kind of stand back. Um, and also, for all you gentlemen who like to wear ball caps, um, maybe pick a different hat or make sure that hat is on securely. Because like today, there's quite a bit of wind. The wind is, is very chilly. Um, but I saw in two different pots the uh, 
the remains of uh, gentlemen's hats. One was a Purdue hat, and you know that had to break that guy's heart. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's not a difficult walk, but I do feel a little tired from walking it. Um, the lake is is stunning, and like Jeff said, it's it's so clear. You can see all the way to the bottom. In, uh, for quite a ways out and and the same with looking in those pools. Here's some tips for visiting West Thumb Geyser Basin. The parking lot is fairly large. We arrived at 9.30 or so and there were still several spaces available. We left at 10.50 and the lot was pretty full. There is a toilet facility in the West Thumb parking lot and if you drove all the way up from Jackson you're probably gonna need it. The boardwalk is wheelchair accessible. One section of the boardwalk is fairly steep with a grade as much as 10%. Like Monique said, it's windy here. In fact, all the geyser basins are extremely windy, so watch your hats. Unless you're coming from the south entrance or you plan on going to Grant Village, West Thumb is a bit out of the way. It's about a 20 mile drive from Old Faithful, about a half hour. And remember, if you're staying in West Yellowstone, that's another half hour of driving back towards Old Faithful. That said, with the lake providing a wonderful backdrop, and in some cases with geysers sitting in the lake itself, West Thumb is different from all the other geyser basins. We spent more than an hour at West Thumb. This was our first geyser basin and we went crazy shooting pictures here. 45 minutes to an hour is probably a decent estimate for walking the West Thumb boardwalk. For camera tips, a wide range of lenses will suit you well. Wide angles allow you to capture the hydrothermal features that are really close to you. But a longer zoom lens, up to 200 millimeters or so, is nice to close in on the geysers in the lake. Don't take a tripod. The boardwalks are too narrow. Your tripod will present a tripping hazard and falling off a boardwalk into a hydrothermal feature could get someone killed. For stabilization and videos, use a monopod, a gimbal, for a cell phone gimbal, we recommend the DJI OM4 or OM5, or brace your camera on a fence post. If your camera supports a polarizer filter, use it to cut the glare on the water. Here are two pictures showing the same scene with and without a polarizer. Learn more about using a polarizer in my episode 19 tips for shooting great photos and video at the Tetons and Yellowstone. The link to that video is in the upper right corner now. Using a cell phone, take your polarized sunglasses and hold them in front of your lens as you see Monique doing here. Now look at the video she was shooting. Notice it starts with no glare, and as she rotates the glasses, more glare appears. Rotate the glasses and shoot several pictures to cut the glare. I encourage you to practice this before you go to the park, and to shoot these shots with and without the sunglasses to make sure you end up with images you like. You'll hear Jeff mention the DJI OM4 gimbal many times in our videos, and you'll see many video clips, photos, and panoramas that I shot while using it. I can't tell you how many times people came up to me and asked where I got that wonderful device. If you use your smartphone to take photos and videos, the OM4 is an amazing gimbal that will improve everything you shoot. Incidentally, after our trip, DJI released an updated version called the OM5, which includes a built-in 12-inch retractable selfie stick that would have been very handy on our trip to take those pictures of Jeff and I together. The OM4 and OM5 are both currently available. In the description below, we've listed purchase links for several great products that we used on our trip that we recommend to you, including the DJI OM4 and OM5 gimbals. Follow those affiliate links to purchase direct from Amazon and support our channel. On our way to Upper Geyser Basin, we made a stop at the Continental Divide sign. The Continental Divide is an imaginary north-south line across our continent. Rivers on one side of the line flow towards the Pacific Ocean. Rivers on the other side flow towards the Atlantic Ocean. Located at an altitude of almost 8,400 feet, the location even had some snow on the ground, even though this was June. <laughs> By the way, if you're looking at the sign and it's in shadows, just walk across the road to the sign on the other side. It will be facing the other way, and it should be in sunlight. That makes for better pictures. 
we made another stop on the way to Upper Geyser Basin at Kepler Cascades. Located about two and a half miles from the Upper Geyser Basin, the Kepler Cascades drop 150 feet over a series of smaller falls on the Firehole River. Here's a couple tips for Kepler Cascades. This stop is super easy with a pull-off on the west side of the Lower Loop Road. From the parking lot, it's a two-minute walk to the falls. You rarely find a dramatic waterfall located so conveniently next to the road, so don't miss this one. The Kepler Cascades won't take much time from your day either. You can visit this location in as little as 10 minutes. Photographically, this is a great opportunity to shoot a large waterfall from a looking down perspective. You're far enough away that you can capture the entire falls without having to use an ultra-wide lens. As with any waterfall, the Kepler Cascades provide a terrific chance to shoot long exposures, creating that cool water ghosting effect in your shot. And the parking lot is so close, it's easy to haul the equipment you need to the viewing platform. What equipment is that? You'll need a tripod, a neutral density filter, and a remote shutter release. Bear in mind that the falls are a little farther away, so you may need to use a really long exposure or zoom in to really capture the water's motion the way you want. Also, the wood platform everyone stands on to view the cascades is prone to shaking as people walk around it, so take several shots. Some of those long exposures may be messed up due to the shaking. If you're enjoying this video and find the tips to be helpful, I hope you'll click the thumbs up icon and send a like our way. We finally arrived at the Upper Geyser Basin. Our first impression of the parking area, visitor center, and roads at the entrance for this basin was chaos. This map of the basin gives no sense of how large the parking area really is. Thousands of parking spots and several roads in a seemingly random pattern. We arrived around noon, and even with all the parking spaces, we could only find an open spot at the outer edges of the parking lots. Finally, we reached the viewing area for Old Faithful. Take a look at how many people are sitting around this geyser. It's about 45 minutes before this is scheduled to go off. We decided we would walk around the upper basin first and view Old Faithful on our way out. We reached Grand Geyser at about the time it was predicted to erupt. We learned two big lessons here. First, if you want a seat for this spectacle, get there well before the geyser is supposed to erupt. Second, eruption times are estimates and subject to the whims of Mother Nature. We stayed for an hour and a half after the predicted eruption time without seeing the geyser go off. We finally gave up on it and continued our stroll along the upper geyser basin. Finally, we reached Morning Glory Pool. It's pretty incredible. 
Those others are all really, really pretty too. They don't, they don't get nearly enough credit. Or mentioned. Beautiful or mentioned. This one is pretty large and really deep. Yes, but this is just spectacular. You know, there are probably five or eight places on Yellowstone that for me were a must-see that I really wanted to go see. And maybe the number one on that list was the Morning Glory Pool. And it is worth every moment I thought about it. This is just amazing. Trails down to the river down that way. It just, it doesn't even look real. It doesn't look like something on this planet. We left Morning Glory Pool and headed back toward the visitor center. This is Castle Geyser. Earlier in the day as we were walking out to the geyser basin, uh, we saw this one erupting. I have several clips of it erupting from different angles. Now we're a little closer to it. This is Crested Pool. It smells a little worse than the other ones. So one tip that I think everybody should, should think about, yes, the gift shop is there and it's very tempting when you first get here, but I have seen more people carrying for five miles a brown paper bag <laughs> with heavy things in it sometimes. So save your trip to the gift shop, gift shop until after you've toured all the, the uh, geysers because you know, who wants to carry a brown paper bag all over the park? As we approached the Old Faithful area, we met an unexpected greeter. An older male buffalo sat alongside the trail and calmly watched everyone pass him by. We got to the Old Faithful seating area with about 30 minutes to spare. That gave us a chance to rest our feet before watching the big show. After the eruption, we decided to go to the gift shop and the car. The stores and the roads were all packed. What made it really bad is that we couldn't remember where we parked. We paid for that mistake. <laughs> Monique and I have already given you some tips for Upper Geyser Basin. I've listed those out on the screen as a reminder. Pause the video in case you're making notes. Here's some more tips for Upper Geyser Basin and Old Faithful. We found the National Park Service's Yellowstone app to be worthless, and this held true throughout our visit to Yellowstone. No matter where we tried to use it, even at the hotel, it would not update geyser eruption information for us. You can try it for yourself, but don't rely on it. Get information about the geyser schedules from signs at the visitor center. If your arrival time fits with the geyser schedule, try to go to Old Faithful Geyser first, then walk the basin. If you can't do that, hang around the Old Faithful seating area for 15 or 20 minutes after it's done erupting to let everyone clear out. You will enjoy the gift shop more and suffer less traffic when leaving. We arrived around noon and as you can see the line for the restaurant is insane. Monique planned ahead and packed lunches for us every day so we didn't need the restaurants. If you do, plan your arrival time accordingly. Use the restrooms at the visitor center before going out into the basin. That said, we did find one bathroom at Riverside Geyser. Take the inside trail as you go from Old Faithful to Morning Glory Pool to see most of the hydrothermal features. Then you can come back a couple different ways. You can return on the inner loop the way you came. Or you can take the outside loop the outside loop is a boring walk with only a couple features along that path. 
but it's a shorter walk than if you backtrack on the boardwalk. We walked about four miles as we went around the basin. Virtually all of the basin's trails are boardwalks or asphalt, so it's very accessible for people with mobility issues. Check the map for a few steep areas that may present problems. Wear sunscreen. Our sunscreen hats did a terrific job of protecting our ears and necks, but we should have worn sunscreen on our faces and hands. The basin is wide open with no trees to offer protection from the sun. In these conditions, at this altitude, walking this distance, water is a serious issue. Make sure to carry some with you. We didn't and we were really struggling by the time we got back to the car. Parents, please monitor your children. We saw so many kids running on the boardwalk or, in the case of this brat, walking off the boardwalk intentionally. You're supposed to stay on the boardwalk. Good idea. People just don't understand how dangerous it can be to step off the boardwalks, and doing this is harmful to the fragile basin environment as well. And frankly, I shouldn't have to be the one to tell somebody else's kid to follow the rules. If you take kids to the geyser basins, bring the responsibility to keep them safe along with you. The visitor center closed really early. We tried to go in there around 4.30 or 5 and it was shut down. Check the schedule before you go. We didn't have any problems with bugs there. Monique says the sulfur chases away the bugs. Expect any geyser basin to be a high wind area. Hats get blown off very easily. Also, you will find the temperatures fluctuate dramatically. Things get cooler with the wind and then they suddenly get much hotter when you're near a hydrothermal feature. Dress in layers. For photographers, my thoughts are similar to what they were with West Thumb. You'll use a wide angle to moderate telephoto lens most. Longer lenses may help for catching a faraway geyser. A polarizer will cut the glare on the water. Bring a lens cleaning kit with you. It's almost guaranteed that you will get steamed or even sprayed by the geysers. We're close enough to be catching some of the spray. Clean your lens frequently to avoid spots on the pictures. Don't take a tripod on the narrow boardwalks for safety reasons. Use a monopod or a gimbal for stabilization. You can shoot at this basin almost any time of day. If you get there around sunrise or sunset, you may have difficulty shooting some features depending on the direction of light. By the time we left Upper Basin, it was 5.30 and we were tired and hungry. We drove to West Yellowstone and checked into our hotel, the Yellowstone Lodge. To save time, we'll put the review of this hotel in a separate video. If you need a hotel in West Yellowstone, watch our review of Yellowstone Lodge to see if it's right for you. The link is in the upper right corner. Before retiring for the night, we decided to visit the Three Bear restaurant for dinner. Again, to save time, we'll put our review of this restaurant in a separate video. Check out our thoughts on Three Bear restaurants so you'll know if this is a good place to eat when you're in West Yellowstone. The link is in the upper right corner. What an exciting first day at Yellowstone. Wandering through all the geysers, springs, and other hydrothermal features, including the amazing Morning Glory Pool, Grotto Geyser, and Old Faithful, gave us a real taste of what Yellowstone National Park had to offer. Now, coming that close to a buffalo added some excitement to our day, but we had no way to know we would have even closer encounters and see hundreds of buffalo over the next two days. In our next video, June 8th, we continue our exploration of the southwest section of the Lower Loop Road, shooting photos and videos and documenting helpful tips at six different locations. We'll start with a hike to Grand Prismatic Spring Overlook. Then we walk the boardwalk around Grand Prismatic Spring and Midway Geyser Basin. We tour fountain mud pots to see more hydrothermal features and bump into yet another buffalo. We take a scenic tour on Firehole Drive. Have you heard about this short drive? Be sure to watch our episode to learn more. Then we hike through Biscuit Basin and Black Sands Basin, two more basins close to Old Faithful that offer their own brilliant scenes. Each of our vlog videos includes several tips to help you with your vacation, so if you haven't subscribed already, now's the time to do it. And hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we publish again. Until then, check out more videos in our Wyoming Vacation playlist on screen now. We'd love to see your comments and questions. 
post them in the comments below.